Today uh, he is planning to give some case study of different type of uh, application of wireless sensor network internet of uh, things based system. So today he will mainly talk about the case study, smart home, smart bed, smart city, what are the challenges are there and what are the research opportunity. That is also very important for us. Those who are doing PhD, those who want to continue research, who are planning to do research, we have to get problem. In PhD, if once we get the problem, it things are quite easy for you to carry on. That uh, Professor Sufas Chandra Mukhopa, he is having some problems of back pain. So maybe day before he started, he is having this pain. Uh, pain. So he will not able to give the lecture by standing. So this is excuse for <laughs> for you people also. He will give lecture with, uh, with sittings. So today, uh, as uh, Professor Islam told, today effectively the last day because uh, tomorrow we, the, the presentation what I'll give is uh, out of uh, the course which is on tips on paper writing. So today we'll take few projects what we have, uh, we have worked and we are still working, so just to share. Uh, so the first one is the smart home. So <coughs> smart home is a old project which we are working for many, many years. And uh, in recent times, uh, we developed a protocol which is not a 100% uh, foolproof yet because the protocol has got lots of things, but uh, we started working on that and uh, is working at the moment as a uh, prototype system. So we have uh, developed that protocol and is working in a home for days and days in and days out. So almost like last uh, one year is in working condition. So there are some issues, but still uh, we are having that protocol working. Protocol we have named as wellness protocol because uh, wireless sensor protocol ITP802 already there and you cannot compete with that and there is no point of competing with that because you, you actually take a lot of the things from there. So you cannot actually say that uh, it is a completely new protocol. Now yesterday if you have uh, remember from Nagender's uh, presentation as well as uh, earlier what I have told you that Zigbee protocol or any ITP802 protocol, uh, they are actually developed uh, not for a small system. They are actually developed for a uh, relatively large system. So when you think of 64-bit address, that means effectively you actually talk of 65,536 systems in the complete systems. And that brings the problem. So if you have many nodes, uh, actually uh, you will find a lot of issues like data loss, reliability, uh, delay, and so the performance will not be as expected. So then the, then the need of a new protocol comes depending on the applications. So if you think of smart home, we are talking about something like 50 nodes. So you always ask questions that whether really you need to have that protocol. So that was the background because we are, we were, we, we still use Zigbee protocol and we, we face that difficulty when we think of storing the data. So you store huge amount of data because the data comes as a whole packet and the data comes to the server. Now you may always ask why you actually send so many data. Your actual data may be 15 to 20 percent. That's the data means the status of the device. But Zigbee does not give you the processing capability at the node end. If you remember Zigbee, you can connect some signals, SCUM sensor, analog digital, data formatting, data transmission, you do not have any control. Okay? That is decided by Zigbee protocol. So even if you have four sensor, effectively you may have eight bytes of data but Zigbee sends around 55, 56 bytes. So if you think of that, all the bytes, what you are receiving at the server end, they are actually not used. Of course, for storage, you may actually save only the data. But then the storage, 
when all the data comes effectively you can store everything to make your processing fast. Then you go for offline do the actual processing. Actual processing need to be done, but if you do the storage, if you do the processing and storage, then things become more delay. So, there are issues. So, effectively sometimes what happen you store everything and then when you do the offline analysis, then you actually take the actual data. So, those are the issues we face. So, the name we gave wellness protocol because it is it is specifically designed for smart home and in the smart home our main objective is to provide the environment where the person can live in a safe sound and secure environment. So, effectively we are talking about the wellness of the person. So, that is why you call it wellness protocol. So, you especially those who are working in the area of computer science, you will find that they actually use AAL term quite common. So, AAL terms, term indicates ambient assisted living. So, this is a this is a research topic from the computer science point of view not so much from engineering point of view. So, that is of course, based on wireless sensor networks. Then our aim is to provide the analytical value of the wellness of the persons. So, how do we determine the wellness? What are the wellness indices we can use? Of course, you can always say I am 80 percent well, but you are 80 percent well now. How can you actually tell how much well I will be tomorrow? Is impossible to say because tomorrow before tomorrow I might die in accident. Okay. So, some things is all that is what it comes actually forecasting. I mean forecasting is something which you never believe. It can be true okay. and that is what when some when the weather forecast say there is a possibility of 80 percent rain. So, that is based on some kind of calculations that okay, if you have this, this, these factors how it can resulted in this type of things. So, our research mostly on forecasting. Now, forecasting is important because based on the forecasting you can actually take a lot of corrective actions. Okay. If you uh, I do not know whether uh, you remember like when there was dengue in New Delhi, uh, there was a lot of research on uh, that type of things. And uh, I, I was last year I was in Oxford for a workshop and there is someone came from Leicester and they actually uh, developed an analytical model for predicting the effect of dengue in New Delhi, you know how you can actually do something. So, that type of things come. So, what actually happened they introduce some kind of medicine and that medicine takes some time for to do, do some real stoppage you know that type of model they do. So, forecasting is very very important because based on the forecast lot of corrective actions can be taken and that can help also uh, for the government to take some strategical decision. Okay. So, and then the protocol I talk about the protocol what we do. So, question is why we need the smart home? Smart home is not for elderly, smart home can be for anybody living at home. So, normal home where we live with the help of sensing, sensing systems, microprocessor, embedded controller for uh, communications and smart things we can make the normal home as smart home which can help in different situation. So, the more important thing for smart home is for the people living alone. If you see that in traditionally Indian system where we have joint families, I mean our grandfather, grandmother they used to live joint families, still that tradition is there, but due to the job opportunities due to different problems and also independence, privacy, too much privacy we need our own little family is not it. So, this joint family concept is completely deteriorating. It is happened in developed country many years back, but in India it is also very very common now. So, statistically if you see in India 9.6 percent 
of the whole Indian populations are live alone, 9.6 percent. So sometime percent does not mean anything, but if you see 9.6 percent in India, which means more than 120 million people, that may take you 30 New Zealand, isn't it? New Zealand only 4.5 million. So the percentage can mean many important things, but sometimes you take the real value. So if you see now, the, this is the statistics. So we are somewhere here, okay, which may be around 16, 17 percent of the whole, uh, whole population of the world, and this is 65 plus. But if you see 2050, it will go to 25 percent. So 25 percent of the whole world populations will live alone. So that is a statistics which is a huge concern. If you remember, I showed you this picture before, again I am repeating. So that is the prediction that this boy need not to be a Chinese origin, it can be anybody will live 120 years. So now if you find that we, we actually retire at the age of 60 or 65, sometime it made at 58, is not it, in India. Luckily in New Zealand also when I go to Australia, we do not have any retirement age. As long as I can control my back pain, I can continue to work. But that is not happening in other country. So once people retire, it is a big problem because you were engaged and suddenly you are completely free and your brain is not free, is not it? So ideal brain is the devil's workshop, that is a statement we all know. And actually that makes people to become more old quickly. So this is a problem unless you have some kind of you know, arrangement, whether it is a social activities or whatever it is, people will be sick very quickly. And when you become sick, you have a lot of accident. You fall down very easily because your mental balance lost. So at some stage, these are the Japanese people. They are around 85 to 92 years old. Even Japanese people have a good name that they have the maximum life expectancy, but they also are not free from this type of problem. So what I am showing here that this lady, she is 92, she needs help for some caregiver for her feeding. This lady, she need to be taken to toilet for the toilet activities. So this may be at one, at some stage of our life when we will be dependent. Technology will not help. Technology will not help anything for avoiding that type of issues, isn't it? Because we need physical persons who actually can help us. But at this type of situation, this is the man who was our student and he was living at his home alone. He died. We do not know why. He was not, he was less than 50 years old. He died. We do not know why. And his dead body was discovered after 20 days by the neighbor because big, big flies coming in and out. There are many incidents happen every parts of the world. In fact, last few months back, one person in our city, he is in our city, one person in our city, he was also living alone. He fallen down. So what happened? He had, he bought something by plastic bag and forgot, so the plastic bag was on the floor and he accidentally, you know, stand on that plastic bag while he was walking a little bit quick and he slept. He slept in such a bad way that he could not get up and then started screaming, screaming. After six days, somebody from outside, actually it was a, it was a electrician, so somehow came there, don't, because he was lucky that he will not die. You know, came there and heard the sound and then somehow you know, called police and broke the door and found him. So anyway, he, he survived even though he had huge dehydration. But that type of situation, when somebody is living alone, nobody is there to help, technology will be really, really useful. So earlier days we used to tell that we target elderly people, okay? we target elderly people. But if you see these statistics, you actually will change the focus of your research. So what I am showing here, 
is that percentage of people at different age. This is actually US, but it can be true other part of the world. So, what we see here, see men between 15 to 64, 34.3 percent, whereas men above 65, 5.5 percent. Similarly, for women between 15 to 64, 30.1 percent, but ab above 65 is 10 percent. So, if you see that when you do your research, what will be your focus? Now, if you see commercial point of view, of course, you want more market, is not it? So, if that product, what we are doing becomes a product and used, then you can actually cater for maximum number of people. So, you will forget about the elderly, you will think of that from teenager to that 60. So, what happened during like you think of the situation that you usually do your schooling being with the parents, but then you go to university, you leave your home. So, you, you live alone and then you get a job, you live alone. So, that type of situation that is why its percentage is very high. So, effectively what I am to say that it is not only mandatory smart home for elderly people it actually can be very useful for any age, especially if somebody living alone at home. So, that is the focus. So, ambient assisted living, the meaning of ambient assisted living is that if you have some kind of technology which assist you for your normal living conditions. So, that is the whole idea that can you make an environment where the technology can help you in your day daily living. And that also gives some kind of I mean not that physical support, but it is the mental support. So, somebody living alone, he thinks that yes, actually I am looking after, looked after by someone. So, if something happens, yeah, I will not die. That mental peace sometimes is very, very important. I mean if you think of that, whenever we are sick, if you do not go to a doctor, you will be sick for a long time. You go to a doctor, Doctor may give some medicine like for me, he I do not know what medicine, medicine he has given, maybe some painkiller, but after I met him, I am getting better. Okay. I mean that is the way things work, is not it? So, the mental condition actually is very, very helpful to recover from physical illness. So, similar situation, if you think that okay, fine, somebody is actually looking after me, taking care of me, you give, get a mental situation which is quite useful for someone. So, our situation is that we were, we were, st we started working on Manet, then we use Zigbee protocol, still we have Zigbee protocol in many application, but we also developed our own protocol. So, this is the Zigbee protocol, the main thing what we do here is different sensor. Now, this type of uh, pro uh, project or this type of problem, you always need to start from some kind of uh, what should I say uh, some kind of social requirement. So, if you think of New Zealand scenario, it will be completely different for India. So, if you want to target India, you need to know the lifestyle of that person, what type of life he leads, what type of equipment he use, what type of things are there in his home because at the end of the day you monitor the appliances what is used by the person. Of course, you may say some physiological things will come, but that is different domain that um, comes under wearable sensor, which also can be connected to the system, but wearable sensor usually not very popular by people. So, you say for me if you think of that for the recording I have got some things and actually this restricts my movement, is not it. So, similarly, if you have something which comes on your body for monitoring you for 24 hours, one day, two day you may like it, but not every day. So, that is a wearable sensor is a huge domain of research, especially wearable sensor is very, very useful in the teenager, teenager on the young age and that is why uh, Google Glass all these things are getting lot of lot of you know interest in their applications, but for normal people you will not like wearable sensor as a main research topic. Of course, wearable sensor is a, is a huge research interest to some group of people. 
we we do not say that wearable well sensor is out of our interest is there, but not the main. So, effectively here what we do we many monitor different things which are used by the persons every day. You need to monitor real time because when we talk about the activities we say the regular activities and irregular activities. So, the definition of the irregular means something is not happening at that time. Okay. So, let us say we take we get up from the bed at 7, 7 30 if somebody does not get up at that time it is irregular. You take breakfast at 8 o'clock if you do not take breakfast between 8 to 8 30 how much time you wait that depends on the system that depends on the intelligence you introduce then you say it is irregular. So, the irregular activities it should come from real time. So, that is why real time is very very important because time is also an important element in the whole system. Okay. So, you monitor all these activities and then you decide whether something is irregular. If something is irregular and it is risky that means, that lead to the person's life in a different way which can lead to something then you need to generate the warning text message and that warning text message should go to the caregiver through a mobile system. Caregiver can be anybody who will be looking after the person. So, that is the whole idea. So, here you as you see there are elements which are the hardware elements sensing elements which are useful and necessary actually essential because you need to detect that irregular things regular activities. Also all the data comes to the controller controller analyze the data and is very important there that you need to have some intelligent processing because at the end you come up with some kind of decision where you need to send a warning message or not. All those data you actually store. So, when we say the forecasting data will be very very useful. When you say that data will be used by physician. Okay. Now, physician means like for example, like I went to doctor two days back and he asked me what happened. I told him this thing happened, I had a bad problem this thing that thing for 20 years, but here suddenly you know this thing happened. So, he did some test I mean of course, when I say spondylitis of course, he has to do some test, okay. but if it is a different types of problem and you tell the doctors how do you actually ensure the doctor actually listens is not it. See I went to the doctor 8 o'clock I do not know when he started his day. If he started his day at 8 30 9 o'clock in the morning how can you ensure that 8 o'clock in the evening that fellow listened to you. So, that fellow when when the patient come he must have decided okay, I will give him this medicine some kind of painkiller it will be ok. But in actual scenario if you have a system that okay, my daily lives are recorded ok. You go to doctor, doctor does not need to ask you doctor will ask you ok what is your health index number or something like we in New Zealand we have called NIH. So, that is the number I have got ok where all my records are stored and doctor has the access secured access. So, he can immediately in the go to the computer see everything all are stored something are graphically some things are red flag okay, that okay, yesterday I got up very late or I went to toilet in the night three times instead of only one time. He does not need to ask you he gets everything you understand and then he can give the medicine which will be much more effective. So, our idea when we say the wellness prediction our idea is to give the complete scenario to the health professional. So, health informatics is the term comes here and that is a very important research topic for the computer science people because this it involves lot of data handling. So, that is the whole idea for us that not only the generation of irregular activities determination of irregular activities to generate the warning text message, but it also saves all your activities and that can be used by a health professional. Okay. So, that will be very very useful. So, it depends on what type of activity what type of lifestyle the person leads. Okay. So, this lady is my mother in law 
see lips and we monitor actually she was the first guinea pig of our system. So, she is appear she appeared in many of my research paper. Now, here what I want to show in this picture. So, she has a hobby of sewing the sewing one sewing machine. See many electrical appliances the interesting thing is many electrical appliances you need just to switch on is not it. So, you get only one instant suppose you switch on a microwave oven for 3, 4, 5 minutes you just switch it on open the door put the thing switch it on finish you take during that time you do not get any information about the person is not it or you switch on a TV you just switch on you need the manual intervention after the TV is on for half an hour 1 hour 2 hours you do not need any kind of inform information any, you do not get any kind of information about the person. But if you have a system like that where you need the physical contacts or physical activities throughout the usage you are really really lucky because you are not monitoring the appliance you are monitoring the person you understand. So, sometimes the electrical appliances does not give you more information than the other type of appliances for example, bed for example, chair for example, toilet because you need the person's activities and you get the person's activities as long as the sensor is used. So, sometimes the daily life of the person is very important. So, initially when we install and when we apply the system to somebody I mean unfortunately we did not have too many subject we had only 4 subject and then uh, the student like when Nagender was uh, developing his system uh, I had to buy a house you know and he was living there. So, he was monitored ok <laughs> because sometimes you make your system and you do not know where you are going to install unless you know that person very well you trust that person very well because you involve you are involving laptop some system which is like little expensive and you do not know the person you install and then the gone you know. So, <laughs> your research will stop is not it because you do not have a huge funding. So, it sometimes it is very very important that you need you know some trusted people. So, our subjects are not too many because we had to go through this process that ok we know and nothing will be you know from our point of view nothing will be lost. So, first person was my mother in law and we had made some kind of separate arrangement and she was monitored, but uh, there are some issues because I cannot speak to her because of the language and uh, so through my wife she tells she cannot sleep properly with the on the bed because she thinks something is there. You know. <laughs> So, that is another problem, but anyway so we had to convince because old people different mentality. So, you have to tell them no this is actually for your goodness you know nothing is going to harm you. So, anyway so wearable sensor can also come if you think the person is actually willing to have that sometimes you may have some person who likes to have some wearable sensor. Actually we have seen that uh, when somebody has got some problem especially heart related problem or even like kidney related problem where doctor wants to assess continuously for 20, 48 hours or 72 hours that type of situation doctor gives some kind of wearable device which monitors the some physiological parameters and they are stored and then doctor um, checks from the memory and see those type of situation people accept it, but normally people do not accept, but sometimes uh, in some situation you may have the opportunity that you you. So, we develop this one uh, which measure three parameters one is the body temperature one is the heart rate and as the body conductance, but we also got a lot of result with this as a volunteer to see our system working or not, but later on we change this one to the emotion recognition. So, emotion recognition the whole idea is in the home monitoring system it can be part of that. The whole idea is to is to generate a text message uh, based on the some kind of abnormal condition or irregular condition. Now, irregularity means 
the person is not living at regular condition, isn't it? So, if you say the person that okay, you do not need to wear anything, but if you feel not normal, just go and put your hand on the system. Okay, so, that will be placed side of is the bed. So, you can put on your hands on this for 2 minutes and then the system will do the processing and it will go for the offline clustering technique based on your training data and then it can come out where is the emotion. So, if the emotion is angry or sad, you actually generate a text message. Okay. So, in that case person actually not forcing the system to send the text message, person physiological state as well as some kind of mental state because emotion not only physiological, it is mental that can help. So, that was the idea of this. So, when we started our project for the electrical appliances, we monitor yes or no, but later on we introduce how much power is consumed, how many how much time duration the system is on, what is the total harmonic distortion. So, that comes from the smart grid aspect. Okay. So, if you think of smart grid of course, the when you talk of the grid it always like some hundreds of kilo volt, but at the sensing end it does not really matter. You do not measure 100 kilo of kilo volt, you get the voltage which is measurable level. So, here we can also control yesterday what you have seen from Naginder you can also control. So, that process has been, so it is also a master project. Then the monitoring the gas leakage, so inside the house you use the gas for cooking and heating of water, heating of normal things. So, if there is a leakage we can also detect the gas leakage, uh, usually the problem is gas leakage that gas is always in the floor, gas is quite heavy, the gas comes in the floor. So, if the sensor is placed a little bit top, it cannot actually detect so much. So, need to be in the in the uh, floor level. So, effectively the whole things what we have monitoring different appliances all these things that actually gives you the systems for health informatics. Okay. So, all this is all this data are required then it will be analyzed to determine the health of the person. So, it should be done on real time as time is the most important factor because when it is happening all these things you need to know. So, all the data from the system that comes raw data come with a time stamp to the your coordinator where the data all the data are received and collected, stored and analyzed. So, after that you do the activity recognition. So, this is one of the process which people need to be very careful of how can you do everything very quickly. Data are received, data are stored, then you do the analysis in different domain. You understand because everything happening quickly. So, that was one of the biggest challenge what type of software you use. So, from the perspective of computer science it is really really useful because once the data is received engineering part gone. Okay then it comes on the data analysis. So, how you how quickly you could do that? It is a big challenge. So, you have to determine what type of activity. So, whether the person is sleeping, person is actually having breakfast, person gone to toilet you need to know and not only that you need to know wh whether they are regular or they are irregular. If it is irregular whether you need to send the text message right now or you have to wait how long you will wait. So, all this decision has to be done by intelligent algorithm, intelligent software and then once you do if everything is normal you determine what is the wellness, how well it is. Of course, it is some kind of model. So, you have to you have to go through that and you just store everything. If everything is normal you do not do anything just go on storing the things. And from health informatics point of view, you just do not store all unnecessary data. From a healthcare point of view, doctors wants to see most important thing, you understand. So, like if I if I go to doctor, they take the blood and see my uh, different level, iron level or vitamin B12 level or this thing, they want to see something like that. 
So that need to be consulted with the healthcare professional, what type of data you want to see, you can store it that way. So again, there is lot of information, lot of things can be done from the computer science point of view. So what actually we, we face the difficulties from computer science point of view, lots of data, is not it? Lots of data, so the collection methods, analysis methods, so there is a need of devising new things. So you need lot of resources. The whole idea is that from this information you need to collect the real information which is very, very useful and you have to make the decision. So whether you generate a text message or you keep it with a flag or something like that, those type of decision that comes from the analysis of the data. And whether those things which actually help to devise a new policy. Now this is of course not the research point of view, but as I was saying that many, com many countries are providing lot of money for doing research on the healthcare. The whole idea is that they want to adopt a strategy which actually reduce the cost of the healthcare from national budget. So, UK, Australia, New Zealand is not that much, but few countries they are actually giving lot of money. So, the whole idea is that they want to reduce the healthcare cost. How? Something the, if they know well in advance, instead of actually uh, they actually want to do the prevention, okay? because once something happen, then you cannot do anything, you have to go for the treatment, the re recovery and all the things, so it is a huge expenses. So if you can avoid that type of problem. So that is the whole idea whether in future our things can be useful for that type of you know, strategy decision. So what are the key components? So we have of course sensor, all these things, sensing, instrumentation, microvisor, all uh, uh, your wireless communication, all these things. So that come and the most important thing you have is the information processing. Because you get the data, data can be, data always comes as raw data, data can be carrying some information which is not right, data can have some missing information, data can have some wrong information. So actually the information processing is very, very important. So here you have to develop different model where you will also analyze that these are all real data. If some missing data, you have to predict the missing data. So in order to develop the model, those things are very important. And this ICT technology should be kept, uh, include the subsystem. So you have developed a system and then you decide, can I actually add something else? Okay? Because with time, you know much better about the lifestyle of the person. So if you introduce a new system, whether the system will actually accept it. So that type of provision you should have, it should be flexible, it should be robust and of course it should have the ability to process the data on real time. Now one of the interesting thing is that people lifestyle usually it is a cyclic, is not it? Usually it is a cyclic. If the person is retired or unemployed, then it is a cycle of 7 days. But if the person is like us, it is like 5 days cycle and then 2 days different cycle. You understand what I mean? Or in some countries, 6 days cycle and 1 day exception. Okay? So that actually provides the opportunity to develop this type of system. If something is completely different, no, Monday is no relationship with Tuesday, even each, every Monday is completely you know, haphazard. Now that happened for many people, then it is impossible to have this type of system. Because this type of system based on some kind of cyclic activities. If you not, then you have to make a different types of system which does not have any relationship with history. You understand? So your past life has no relationship with your present and cannot tell anything of future. Then it is very, very difficult to have any system to be developed. So this is based on a cyclic activities and that actually tells us the wellness of the person. So we, we can determine the daily activities and we can determine the behavior. So 
once we monitor so effectively what happened before you install a system you need to make a questionnaire to get everything of the person's lifestyle you have some questions you ask when do you go to sleep when do you get up whether you get up in the night to go to toilet how many times you go to toilet when do you finally get up in the morning after getting up morning what do you do when do you take your breakfast what type of breakfast do you so you need to have a full set of questionnaire of the 24 hours and of course other days if all the days are similar in saturday sunday whether the persons actually go outside to meet somebody if the person is elderly whether relatives come to meet him all these things whether the person has got a pet all this information is required because those information are useful in the beginning to make the reference so that you actually compare with reference once you have that then you install the system the system used for 2 weeks 3 weeks 4 weeks they rectify those things and then it actually operates in a normal way and then when something happens your that thresholding changes with the actual data so that's the way things are work and so when you say that adl activities of daily living so again that's a term used by the computer science people very frequently adl so what are the activities the person do for the daily living now even though we install sensor but sensor sometimes sensor may not give you direct indication of activity sometimes you may need to rely on few sensor for example if you say i am now eating how can i say i am actually eating how can you say that some person is eating before eating he has to prepare food so sometimes you have to introduce your own intelligence and own thinking to say oh actually person has opened the refrigerator person has switched on some kind of heating either it's a microwave or it's a toaster or something and then person has used some other things which you are monitoring person is have opened the tap of the kitchen so using water all these things means person is making food you understand in uk there is a university called university of newcastle they have a project which is 9 million pound project and they made the lab as a house all the utensils has got sensor okay so whenever the person using any utensils they actually can tell what utensils he or she is using now in reality it is very difficult lab environment is fine you understand in reality it is very difficult because you may have sen some sensor in the equipment but how do you ensure that sensor will be there with the equipment for long and then washing and other things so it is quite complicated and also it makes the things very very difficult so our aim is not that level but you can monitor few of the things ok because refrigerator door opening closing very simple using contact sensor electrical appliances very simple water monitoring is simple and then finally you are having monitoring the chair the person is using the dining chair so you can relate okay so that type of idea so some sensor you can directly get what type of things are happening some sensor in combination you have to you have to think of that it happens that way so these activities of daily living is very very important to know what type of activities the person is doing because you actually want to say if those activities happen in a regular way the person is healthy okay person is well so that's the idea again it's like a, you are using your own decision so you you have lots of raw data coming up that raw data also coming up from different event ok so the new protocol what we are doing is called event based protocol so only when event happen you generate the data and the data come so once the data comes from the data you actually annotate activities from the activities you can determine what type of behavior person is doing so you, you will find that behavior detection related to smart home by the computer science people behavior detection is a headline okay you can use the keyword behavior detection and you will get many many papers 
I mean and most of the papers comes from the computer science domain. So, abnormal behavior detection, behavior detection they are very very important topic of research. Now, our case we also add those things. So, one is the it is a probabilistic approach whenever you tell something for future it is always the probability is not it. You cannot tell 100 percent sure that this thing is going to happen is not it. And we develop some model where we tell wellness how well the person is and also we use the time because time is the most important data important element. And for telling about activity we actually go for another developed model called sensor activity pattern matching. Now, in, in terms of like kitchen what I was telling that preparing the food you have to you have to monitor few sensor. If this thing happen, this thing happens, this thing happens then you say it can be like that ok. But here you take the probability. So, ok refrigerator door opening and also you cannot say uh, after this because sometime after this it can be some way somebody preparing tea. I prepare tea putting the tea bag first and then put hot water, but I was having tea with professor Islam's office he was putting hot water first and then putting the tea bag. I cannot say professor Islam is abnormal and nobody can say I am abnormal is not it. So, we do not tell that ok it must happen this and this. What we are telling that within the time frame if those activities happen this is normal ok. So, that is why the sequence activity pattern matching is useful. So, we define some wellness function two wellness function we have defined one is excess usage another is no usage. So, why? So, for example, one wellness function this is actually inactive usage this is actually that no usage ok. So, beta 1 what do we mean? You are monitoring the persons using sensor. Now, you are not having any sensor on the person's body. So, no wearable sensor. Now, sometimes it may happen that person is not doing anything you understand what I mean. So, let us say you have got sofa, you have got chair, but person is just standing somewhere in the house ok. Person is standing somewhere in the house what can you do or person has gone out of the house to his lawn ok. In India it may not be possible that if you live in the flat ok, but in New Zealand you have got lawn because houses are normally big. So, when he goes out you may have the door exit door but after that person is not coming inside. So, you cannot monitor. So, how long you can wait when you do not get any sensors activity ok. So, that is why we call inactive use of sensor how long 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours. So, person has gone out in the lawn and then maybe fallen down there not coming back you understand. So, that way we have defined one parameter that if we do not get information of the persons for few hours then something abnormal ok something irregular. Now, you may say how long you decide 1 hour 2 hour 3 hour 4 hour that actually has to come from his or her daily activities. So, if you if you monitor continuously you can say ok he has actually 2 hours does not actually give any information of the sensor or 3 hours. So, that is actually time you decide. Now, if you get more than that time so allowed time 3 hours now after 3 hours so up to 3 hours his wellness is 100 percent after 3 hours you reduce wellness. When it comes down 60 percent or 50 percent that you decide then you generate a text message. So, that way we defined one parameter and then another parameter we define called excess usage. So, excess usage comes especially from bed. So, bed normally people go to bed let us say 9 o'clock and sleeps get up from bed around 7 o'clock normally I mean that has to come from the actual actual pattern actual lifestyle. So, 9 to 7 10 hours. So, person sleeps 10 hours normally ok, but person sleeping more than 10 hours. 
So what happened? Why he is sleeping so much? I mean, definitely we sleep more when we are not 100 percent fit, isn't it? Today I am tired because last night I had a party. Of course, elderly people may not have that much party, but you may sleep more only when you are not 100 percent fit. So, how long you will wait? So, you can wait, okay, fine, half an hour, 45 minutes, one hour, but it might happen person actually died. That is why sleeping too much. You understand? So, we are not telling that we can prevent death. Any home monitoring system, they do not say that they can prevent death, because if they say they will be sued, is not it? So, no company will make that type of system, no company will tell that it will actually prevent anything, because it is impossible. And that is one of the reason you do not have any commercial system at the moment. So, that type of things we, so based on that extra usage, then again you, you come, you come to the factor that whether it is a one hour or half an hour or 45 minutes that comes from his lifestyle. Okay? So, that also data you have to gather from this. And so, that time we actually get from the time series analysis and we can also tell for example, things are going on. You got the data from his lifestyle, but then the system is working. You have to update the data. So, from the recent past you actually get the data updated. And then today is Wednesday, I can predict what can happen for Thursday, what can happen for Friday. So, time series analysis gives you those data. So, that is the prediction and those predicted data are used as the threshold to compare with irregularity. So, this is the, so we use 8 weeks of data. Now, sometimes how much data you will use, how much past data you will use that depends also on the country. For example, in India like now weather is kind of between summer and autumn, uh, you are almost irregular, you know almost regular there is no change. But if you go to New Zealand, we always tell New Zealand is ladies mind, though every day you may have four different types of, four different types of weather. New Zealand is like a big ship in sea. So, New Zealand weather dictated by sea. So, in the morning you may have very good weather, suddenly you see the southerly cans and feel very cold. So, that type of situation happen, that is what you need more past data to predict your future. So, how much it depends on the country, we use 8 weeks of data to tell the future and that gives you the trend, okay? that gives you the trend. So, the trend analysis is one of the important thing from your data. So, that also comes under computer science area. So, yeah, in terms of sensing we use. So, now you can actually do this type of system by two ways. One is you can have a standalone node which can up measure whatever it is, analyze also and upload the data in the internet and you can analyze in the internet in the cloud or you have a server there where all the data from the nodes come into the server, node does not process and you can do the processing at the server. So, you can do both ways. So, we have done both ways, this is the one which Nagender has done and now currently we are going for Intel Galileo based system where this is the thing. So, you can do and uploading the data in the internet. So, from the computer science point of view there are lots of sorts of software you need to develop. So, here few of the things you can see here. So, nodes they are collecting the data, they gives the data to the server and the server has to do all these things. So, ML assist living, remote access and control, behavior generations, context aware scenario all these things are the software based. So, separate separate software need to be developed and they have to operate in the real time and then you have to upload the data in the internet for the remote access. If you have independent sensor node, then you directly put the data in the cloud and then you have to do all these things in the cloud. Okay? I mean for us it is not that we, we share the cloud processing ability 
at the moment still we share the we subscribe the cloud, but we actually do everything in the our own computer and put the data there. So, that is still uh, at the moment happening that way. Okay. So, wellness protocol. So, so far what we are having is the Zigbee based system, many things are similar, but then we came up with a new protocol. Why? So, there are some reason. So, the protocol what you use IEEE 802 is a general purpose protocol. Okay. It's general purpose protocol, it, it is developed by IEEE 2003 and then it is going on. This protocol as you have seen the six, 64 bit address, it can allocate up to 65,000 nodes, 65,535 is not it. So, that is the many, that is the figure we usually do not have that much big system. Because of that, you do not actually know how the system works. So, routing protocol designed and developed by IEEE, you do not have any access of that, you do not have any knowledge of that. So, you do not know what is happening, it does not allow anything of your own. The Zigbee what you use as a sensor node, collects the data, format it, transmit it, you cannot do anything at that point, is not it. So, sometimes you are, if you see yesterday when Nagendra was transmitting the data, of course, it was uh, having a problem of the contact uh, battery uh, because he was doing with the hand. But sometimes it sends the data which is not correct. Zigbee does not have any ability to check whether that data is correct. But if you have a processor there and your temperature, normal temperature is 19.5, whenever you get some temperature which is not close to the actual then you may actually decide no I do not need to send it, you understand. So, if you have a processor at the node end you get that advantage. So, that is not possible. The header data is too large. You have seen that there are 64 bit address, 16 bit address, there are so many other things then of course, checksum and this thing that thing. So, you are sending every time so many data because you need to know when the Zigbee gets the data, code enter gets the data you need to know where from the data is coming. But if you generate your own protocol, you can actually avoid so much data. A huge amount of data is transmitted creating a problem, the sampling was not adaptive, you cannot do the sampling the way you like, you decide by the configuration, storage of data also a big issue. So, these are the problems we faced with time, then we decided that oh, we have a, we, there is a need of having a new protocol. Okay. So, that is the background. So, anyway, so that is the, so what is the problem? We have some problem. So, what is the solution then? Solution is the new protocol. Now, here again as I tell that this is anyone can do anything, okay. but when you have got some reason that I have these are the reason and I can justify there is a need, then you can always justify and convince others. So, that is the most important thing. Okay. We are not telling that we are replacing Zigbee protocol. You have to be very careful that we are not telling that we are replacing Zigbee protocol. Zigbee protocol is very, very suitable for some application, but it is too much if you come to home monitoring. So, we thought that we can actually go for the event based and priority based protocol. So, some event happen we can transmit, some we can also give some priority for some sensor nodes. Okay. Then extra header we can take care of that, delay time can be reduced because you do not have too many sensors, amount of data can be reduced because we can send only the information not too much header because automatically the header can be reduced because you do not have too many sensors. We also can deal with the important information because which we are getting we can decide and also the node end we can process. So, we do not need to send the useless data and because of the data reduced the reliability will be automatically improved. So, these are the reason for us. So, effectively we still use the Zigbee protocol, but we just change little bit in our way. So, that is the normal network model 
and Zigbee uses this. So, here basically we are th using the same thing, but we are actually going little bit of the applications where we introduce our own thing. So, that is the Zigbee protocol which you have seen yesterday how the data are framed and the addresses and this thing. So, so what we do you do not need to follow that I will just tell you what we do. Our protocol we decide what type of appliances we can have. Okay. So, we can have few types of appliances electrical, non-electrical, then some environmental and some movement and up other than that we have some extra which is the panic button. So, effectively we have decided that we have six type of protocol, a six type of sensor. We have given a address for that to identify okay. and then for each type how many device we can have. Now, think of the binary if you use one bit basically you can take two device is not it. So, if you have two bits four device. So, that way we allocated bits. Okay. So, effectively the type of bit decide what type of sense node sensor then after that device you actually know which device. So, that is you are all dealing with the bits. So, the data become very very less then you say yes or no type of answer you do not go for how long are this thing yes or no. So, effectively your data become very very less and then for the for the whole network you have some kind of identification some security starting stop checksum. So, effectively you can make very simple. So, that is what we do. So, you will see here we are talking about the bit destination 4 bit address number of bytes okay, indicate number of sensor all bits bit way priority payload checksum. So, here you can introduce own security also. Okay. Now, we devised our own security, we introduce our own security and that security we develop, but it is very simple. So, what we do? We have decided some number before sending we do some XOR, okay. we do some XOR with that particular number and that particular number is stored somewhere in our system. When we send that when we receive the data the coordinator do another XOR. Okay. So, basically when you when you do the XOR in the node n we are introducing the encryption when we receive at the data at the coordinator end we do another XOR we do the decryption to get back the actual signal. Now, that data where we are encrypt encrypting and decrypting that is actually stored and that is with you. So, the security is also introduced and that is very simple way and that is known to you. So, if somebody gets that it is very difficult because he may try with different values of you know even though he knows this XOR, but he can try with different values. So, it is very very simple and that way we actually prove that within our system it works very well. Okay. So, here you can do that part the security part without any problem. Now, you, you can introduce everything whatever you like, but you need to have the processor at the node end. Zigbee does not give you the provision of any kind of processing. You understand the Zigbee if you use Zigbee protocol you connect your node with the sensor it takes send you do not have any option of doing any kind of processing that is why you need a processor at the node end. Now, you remember that when I was telling that we use the manet we use intel and we had that some kind of transceiver. So, it was basically like that. Okay. So, again we are going to a processor. So, question is what type of processor you will use. So, we have some comparisons we use Galileo, Raspberry Pi, Arduino and of course, the Intel everyone has got its own advantage and disadvantage. So, we are actually working on Intel Galileo as well as Arduino Uno. Okay. So, both are we have made system, but Intel Galileo specifically if you think of internet of things Intel Galileo is better because they have all the things necessary because that has been designed 
for internet of things. So, it is better to go for that. Okay. But we have made system both with Intel Galileo and Arduino. Our earlier system was based on Intel 8051, okay. very old system. So, that is the platform we use Intel Galileo for our sensor and that is the developed system. So, this is the Intel Galileo board and you made the sensor and uh, we in this system what we have done? We have added something uh, in a non scientific way. So, when we monitor somebody especially the food, you will be interest you will be finding some interesting paper coming out in the uh, different uh, conference and journal. People are monitoring what type of food people are having. So, they have some wearable sensor coming in the neck okay, when you take and swallow depending on the raw raw food or liquid food it will be different. So, that type of papers are coming up um, uh, some US researchers are doing that, but we thought that is again it is a problem. So, what we thought see this 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 is the actually switching arrangement okay, there are 8 switch. So, when the person eat then he has to <laughs> press one switch. Okay. So, uh, for normal person is, is quite good, but for elderly it may not be that good. So, we have written that uh, morning, uh, midday, medicine something something we have written. So, that switch has to be pressed. So, we and when the switch is pressed uh, the data goes that okay, person has taken food in the morning or taken medicine in the morning and so on. So, we are, we are trying to we are trying to add things which actually make like a complete system because this is something so complex that it is very difficult to cater needs of everyone. So, that is the structure of our and it is all related to bits. So, that is the actual load where your data sensor status you are sending and then you put the encryption and then you send the stop byte and also sometimes for example, we we monitor some certain activities where we do not need to send the data if there is no change. Okay. For example, you are monitoring temperature and it happens sometimes the temperature is constant is not it 15 degree for quite some time. Now, you monitor and after 10 minutes you still 15 degree then you do not need to send. So, there is also you know we detect the threshold. So, we do not need to send data just like that. So, that is the protocol you can decide you can design and you can implement without much problem. And of course, then you have when you think of the IOT you need to add some other secure things. So, this part is coming from your sensor and then you have your system and here you do some more analyze then you have to go for the MySQL for your data and then you put it into the website. So, actually uh, you can use either my Microsoft or JavaScript whichever you feel comfortable, but here you also use some kind of security between your server to actually to the internet. Okay. So, there also because you are doing everything on your own you can also introduce some other security. So, effectively you you do you do the processing at the node end and there you actually introduce different algorithm to reduce your data to reduce your transmission and also checking the whether data is genuine or not all these things you can do if you have the processing at the node end and then you can send the data. Sometimes you need to use the feature extraction what type of activities are happening uh, and then you can and at the node end or once you do all this then you can do some more in the server end. So, we we have installed the system in a home as well as we checked how the wireless transmission is affected by different factors in the building. So, here this is a building 
where we in introduced lots of sensor and we have analyzed the data reliability based on the wireless hopping and the influence of different materials inside the building. So, sometimes that can also affect a lot. Suppose, you have got some metallic structure and you have got some Wi Fi hotspot, you can have the influence of that. So, we have sensor one is the uh, electrical appliance, one is the force which are used for bed, chair, sofa, we have some ambient temperature monitoring, temperature humidity and also we have some movement sensor. Movement sensor is very useful to track the person, you can actually track the person if you have the movement sensor, because you know between which two sensor the person is. So, that can help for tracking the person. So, if the person is fallen down actually movement sensor can indicate whether the person has fallen down. I mean not exactly fallen down, but suppose move two sensor within that person is uh, something happened for a long time you can use intelligence and say um, maybe something happened. So, that is very very useful. So, that is the website where you can see in the remote access what type of things happen and the time domain as different activities. Okay. So, these are the different activities and the time and the durations you get and that is stored in a date wise fashion. So, you can see which date and then you can actually tell what are the main activities happening. So, you can actually compare the data how much because local home you are getting most of the data. So, your data size is always more, but if you have the cloud where you can just put getting the data and putting the data on the cloud only the useful data you can always reduce. So, that is the delay because you have got many sensor here. Another thing is the number of amount of data stored and there also you can see that our protocol actually you are not storing much information because you reduced all the useless data. So, that can give huge amount of difference and very very useful when you know using the cloud server because you do not need to pay a lot of money. So, that is the very useful thing. Earlier we used to tell that is big data, but when we published the paper the reviewer came up with big data objection. So, we call it large data now. <laughs> okay. So, that is a large data. So, the reviewer did not like that it is only you are talking about few hundreds of megabytes and few gigabytes that is not big data. So, it will ok fine we do not want to argue we change it to large data. Okay. So, if effectively as I said this the these things this type of things the new things come from the need and you must be having sufficient justification to do that and in terms of sharing it with others in the form of papers it is not at all a difficult task if you have the proper justification. So, you need to convince that there is a need and this is specifically for that and that is the reason we have quite a few publication on this.